Monday in February. And uh, February 7th, 6.30 p.m., this is a meeting of the regular meeting of the Arlington City Council, and Mayor Rich Nagel will be presiding. And I'll call the meeting to order. At this time, would you please arise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> that everyone present has signed in on the clipboard over there. So that is recorded in the minutes. Um, we will have roll call. Council Member Morgan? Here. Council Member Sharkey? Here. Council Member Thomas? Here. Council Member Batcher? Here. Council Member Sharkey? And of course we have the home vacancy which will be filling this evening. Um, any agenda additions? By anybody, I do have three or four of them here, so I do have just a couple. And I'll list mine here too. Uh, add item K to consent agenda. Appoint Amy Newsom as temporary representative to the City and County Library Board. And we've done that for temporary. Um, I had a I had a question yes. about the consent agenda. Which item? So it would be E, F, G, okay. and I guess possibly H. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my question would be as if, obviously we're maybe coming to terms with the uh, um, policy that I think that maybe, maybe it's started to spark some of, some of these uh, resignations. Um, so Can I don't take those four items that you mentioned take them and put off them under uh, new business and discuss it through you there. Yeah. And not and we'll just eliminate them from the consent. Yeah. Okay. So items uh, E, F, G, and H will be moved to new business. Okay. Um, under reports, item D, add the 2021 annual report to the ambulance department. And then item uh, 11, fire department 2021 annual report. Under new business, item 18, with the council's approval, I'd like to move that uh, to just before the reports. In other words, right after item 7, under uh, communications. Item 18, I believe there's someone that is going to be present this evening relating to that decision on the liquor permit, and I would just soon not have them be uh, sitting around waiting for the part of the agenda. So again, item 18, moving it to after item 7. Anything else? Hearing none, a motion in order to approve the agenda as amended. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Motion by Batcher, second by Councilman Thomas to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Motion carries. Moving down into the consent agenda, then, uh, the following items remain Item A, approval of the bills. Item B, uh, approval of January 18th, 2022, City Council workshop minutes. Item C, January 18, 2022, City Council Minutes. Item D, approve hiring of Samantha Gregory as an EMT student with Arlington Area Ambulance Service. Then moving up, item E would then be appoint Jeremy Otto as First Assistant Fire Chief through December 31st. Um, item J, appoint Doug Mockentoon as Fire Chief through December 31st, 2023. And I'm getting these all mixed up, excuse me. Um, appoint Jeremy Otto as a first assistant, that would be item E. F would be appoint Doug Mockentune, fire chief through December 31st. And G would be appoint Amy Newsom as temporary representative to Sibley County Library Board. So is it through 2023 or 2022 for, for the 
through 2023. For Doug? Okay, I, di I didn't know for sure that's what he had on there, so. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Motion by Councilmember Morgan, second by Councilmember Sharpie to approve the consent agenda, consent agenda uh, with the amendments as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. Moving on to uh, item five. At this time, is there anyone here that wishes to address the council? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll move on to communications. Um, in your packet this, uh, this uh, for this meeting were the minutes of the cemetery committee meeting and the parks committee. Uh, Phil, did you have any comment on either one of those? All right, I'll just make one comment on each of them. Uh, it seems like the um, one of the big things come out of the cemetery, we have been talking about having computerized or moving all the cemetery records uh, to be computerized and we have two members of that committee now that have stepped up and said we are interested in helping out with that so um, so that is something that will be worked on through the summer and then we can deal with it when it comes to uh, uh, funding and choosing a uh, software that we would like to use for that if the council still feels they do parks committee uh, various items uh, the one that probably brought the most attention uh, and the highest on their list of priorities is to resurface the um, basketball courts at Four Seasons Park. Uh, Council Member Morgan, anything else that I can think that that sort of moved up as the most important yeah, that's, one. That's the way I, there was some yeah. other minor discussions. All right, any questions on either one of those reports? If not, uh, we will go to the item 18, which was moved up now to be item eight after the one I just read, dealing with the um, approve or deny off sale Sunday liquor uh, permit to Deedle Incorporated, which was formerly Arlington Liquor. So this is not a new business, but a, uh, a business that was sold recently. Um, are the owners here? They are not. Okay, I was told that uh, the new owners would be here. So again, this is just uh, taking over uh, what used to be Arlington Liquors. It's still gonna be called, I'm sorry, it's still gonna be called Arlington Liquors, owned by Deedle Incorporated. Sean Deedle, former resident of Arlington, is moving back to, or um, coming back to town to run a business. He lives in Belle Plaine currently. And uh, this then would replace the uh, license now held by Renee Dose. I'll make an impression to uh, motion to approve the off sale Sunday sale liquor license permit to Beetle Inc. Arlington Liquors. Second. Se motion by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Morgan to approve the uh, off sale Sunday liquor per liquor license permit to Deedle Incorporated. Further questions? Discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. Okay, moving back to reports. Item eight, January Public Works Report. Kirby Wickworth. Good evening, Kirby. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. Jump right into it. Uh, yeah, it's kind of slow season other than snow. Uh, snow has kept us busy the last couple months. Um, Primary, primarily get done with our removal and we have quite a bit still the next couple days to kind of get out and um, good snowfall we're busy for a couple days on it just shoring up a lot of details and um, so we've been busy with that the snow has kind of got built up in spots that we got to get out and uh, haul away um, off of boulevards and stuff like that uh, so we've been busy with that um, <clears throat> Kind of our annual shop cleanup, once a year cleanup, and uh, give the shop a makeover. Um, we've had some benches to assemble, and then the picnic tables from last year for the parks yet that, that we're putting together. Um, 
and uh, Summit, uh, the sprinkler company was at the community center last week and they completed the dry air uh, main pipe replacement up in the attic up here, um, which we had a lot of rusting going on and, and little pinholes and stuff like that. So that was in our CIP to get done this year. And so that's, that's uh, finished up. Um, other than that, just kind of been busy with other things. Uh, we had an ice storm in December that we had quite a few street lights that go bad. Um, some of them turned purple, which people probably noticed, but that's covered by our warranty. So I'm working oh. on getting those shipped out and getting the new ones in. Um, so I've, I've had some of that work when it's warm enough to do. Um, yeah, keeping up with skating rink, keeping the skaters happy up there. Um, Daniel's been busy with building checks and minor maintenance here and there in buildings, but uh, so far so good. Uh, no heating issues or anything like that. Um, we had our chipper down to RDO and Mankato. Just some kind of basic repair on that, so we're ready to go for hopefully some tree work uh, once we get more consistent warm days uh, coming up. And that's kind of the gist of it. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, I think so far the snow seasons went relatively well for us. I mean, nothing, it's been quiet <laughs> as far no as big complaints. No big breakdowns or anything? <laughs> Usually we yeah. get a few a year and it's been pretty quiet, so I guess that's good. Okay. All right, anything for Kirby? I Thank guess you. not. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Kidding. Thank yep. you. Good job. <coughs> I have to interject here. When I was taking roll call, I forgot to uh, introduce the other two gentlemen at the table on my left. Uh, in place of Amy Newsom, who is unable to be with us tonight, is Bill Mangus. And on the, my right is Ross Arneson, our city attorney. Welcome to you, too. What's that? You are. You are tonight. <laughs> yeah. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Item 9, January Ambulance Report. Jamie? Make sure the microphone is on, please. Yes. I, yep. through the ambulance report you guys got a copy of the annual report for the service there is mm -hmm. going to be some changes so I'll, I'll kind of point those out to you um, yeah and Amy and I were just kind of uh, following up on some of the numbers and such today so there's just a couple changes that I'll shed some light on too and um, if you have any questions when we go through this just let me know so pretty much between Page one and uh, four, everything remained the same from last year. It's just good information to pass along in regards to our PSA and uh, our partner agencies. And then um, five and six, just kind of touch base on some of the things that we've been doing for the ambulance service, um, including some of the grants that we were able to obtain and so on. So if there's any questions regarding that, please let me know. Um, it's not an all-inclusive thing. Uh, there's a couple things that I forgot to make mention of as far as volunteering goes, but uh, those can be those can be adjusted as fit. Um, on page seven, with the total calls for 2021, that number should be 568. That'll be your first correction, and then I did do the 2020 um, ambulance calls just for comparison. And then uh, we stuck with the dispatch request and then also our, our in route times. Um, for 2021, our average in route time was 3.2 minutes. And again, just to reiterate that our city policy requires us to have an in route time of eight minutes. That's remarkable. That means uh, staff is doing, doing excellent, yes. Um, and then a couple more changes on page nine. If you look uh, to the box on the far left and upper left hand corner, Arlington should actually be 479. Um, Dryden remained the same at four, Washington Lake uh, Township at 28. Green Isle was actually 12. 
that'll be another correction. Uh, Kelso is three, Jessland is five, and that was the last correction up in that box. And then you can see the, the numbers for New Auburn Township. Other locations, which would be other um, counties that we assisted with, other mutual aid uh, transports. And then Henderson and Transit listed under there. And then so if you look under those two boxes at the top, the total number of calls for service in the city of Arlington, that number needs to change to 196. Now, if you're trying to punch the numbers, if you look at 568, I did not include 30 paid and unpaid standby events in the township numbers. Those, those did not get included in those. Um, so that would be like your football games, um, any type of events for the rodeo, the fair, um, anything that uh, was a paid event as far as like raceway items and stuff. I did not include those in on those numbers but they did get included in the main final number, um, but not the township numbers. And then something new I added, just a quick financial snapshot underneath that. Um, the city administrator was able to kind of help me out in regards to um, getting the actual numbers. <coughs> um, you can see that we were, we were over budget, which was really nice to see. Even though our expenses increased, our, our our revenue increased along with it. So it was, it was a nice give and take. Um, I also kind of wanted to touch base in regards to the gas and repairs. I know that there is some discussion regarding um, trying to obtain a new truck. Uh, just uh, food for thought right now, we are still down one truck. Um, we had some major mechanical issues that the Demirs had to be taken care of. Um, unfortunately, it, we did not get a phone call today. We were hoping to get yeah. it back. Um, but as soon as the Demirs comes back, the diesel truck will be going back to North Central because um, they, they need to identify it's not, I don't believe it's an injector issue, it might be a turbo issue. So um, we have to have Matt take a look at it. So it's just kind of like, if it isn't one thing, it's another. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really <laughs> pushing about this new truck. <laughs> It'd be really nice. <laughs> And the, the fun thing about that is too, is the fact that it takes a while for us to get them. So it, it, we're looking at a year and a half before we are able to actually like have it physically in front of us at the time of ordering it. So, and payment is not due until that truck is delivered. And so that's just kind of one of our fighting points for that. Um, and then again, goals for 2021. Um, Number one uh, is reflected in your guys' council packet tonight. Uh, we do have copies of those transport and non-transport surveys that we will be sending out to patients um, as just as a continuation of our quality improvement process. Uh, we wanna know, you know if our skill sets have met their needs, if our professionalism has met our patients' needs, and we, we want that transparency. You know, that's quite important for us. Um, and then also a number two, I am looking into follow up with critical care classes for our paramedics. Uh, this would just kind of help expand our scope of practice in regards to transfers that we can take out of this facility here in town. And then also too, um, continuing to foster that professional relationship with the partners, such as the fire departments and other EMS agencies that we, we partner with, that we depend on too. Um, and then you'll see I did keep the definitions and I did keep the acronyms because that seemed to be a really good point last year. People really like to understand what our yes. technical <laughs> EMS <laughs> mumbo jumbo is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and then also Appendix C is a copy of the um, letter that got sent to the House of Finance that um, Amy and I were able to submit this last year um, just to kind of as a testimony. and how important our rural ambulance services are. So, for your guys' review, any questions regarding the annual report? So, so I have one, I don't know that it's necessarily gonna be directed at you and it's more just a talking point. I, you know, we, at the last meeting we talked about the redistricting and I don't know if that's like, uh, maybe Ross, if, I don't know if you've seen that in the past, does that, when they redistrict, does it end up you know, like affecting the ambulance area at all? The Public commissioners? Yeah, you know how they were looking yes. at that? It wouldn't affect it at all. Mm 
Okay, anything else? Um, Questions? Anything else or is that annual report? No? Nope. Okay, I'll keep moving on here. Um, in the, the council packet, you were able to get the quotes for life pack and the striker, um, oh, the striker life pack and then the Zolt. And Mark is gonna kind of touch base in regards to those items and what he found. So we were tasked with uh, getting some bids, some proposals for a couple of the monitors. Those monitors in a sentence are as important to the rig as the steering wheel is. You quite simply cannot have one without the other. Uh, they do absolutely everything for us when we get in there, including AED, cardiac rhythms, cardiac arrest, the whole nine yards. Uh, so we went out and collected a couple of bids. Um, Life pack came in really nice at just a little under 60 grand. Um, but the really nice thing that LifePak did is on trade-in, we have two Zoll machines currently. Um, Zoll only offered us $500 on a trade-in for their own product, <laughs> where LifePak gave 6000 back to the city. So that was pretty cool. Zoll didn't offer any price breaks, didn't offer any discounts, just kind of gave us like we're a billion dollar business and didn't, didn't do a thing. Where mm. Life Pack really went out of their way, worked with us, stayed in touch with us, called us back. For example, when it was all done, like three days later, he called me back and says, Mark, that trade-in, mm -mm, that's wrong. That can go up to six figures. So we're very pleased with Life Pack. They offer the same thing as the Zoll did. Uh, and so we recommend that we go with Life Pack. Absolutely. Did they uh, did they bring in and allow you to demo or like put your hands on? I think last the year. Unit? No, unfortunately not. I I have some experience with that particular um, okay. so system, and uh, it is when it comes down to certain medical equipment, um, our medical director always requires uh, some sort of approval because they have to know what we're using, they have to approve it, and that sort of thing. When we obtain Dr. Wilcox for our medical director, he is actually for LifePak, because a lot of the services around here have those particular machines. Okay. Um, when I talked to him and let him know that we had Zoll, <coughs> and he said, no, it, that's fine, keep Zoll. He said, if that's what your folks are trained on, that's perfectly fine, I'm familiar with it. He said, absolutely stick with it. Um, when we looked at kind of replacing them last year before the whole um, air conditioning thing went down, um, we, I, I kind of compared my experiences with Zoll and LifePak, and LifePak seems to be very rugged, but then they also are very, very super user friendly, whereas a lot of services do carry Zoll, and a lot of schooling do utilize both machines. Um, so they're very, very easy to learn, and I don't feel our, our crew would have any issues with that if we were to choose to go to LifePak. Um, the nice thing is, is it also integrates fully with our image trend software. <coughs> so that was one of the biggest selling points is that it takes a, a downloaded program and a plug-in. You could plug into the tough pad and all the vitals, all the cardiac rhythms, everything gets automatically uploaded. Whereas in order for Zoll to do that, we would have to have the Zoll program uploaded and that's most likely the difference. So just for ease of process, lack of, you know, try to minimize the errors, especially with that continuity of care between our providers and the facilities. Um, it just, it, I'm just kind of leaning more towards the life pack side. And this just, just blew me away to know that there was that big of a difference between pricing on both products where mm -hmm. they're very comparable. And so yeah, um, I, I, per, I personally prefer LifePak, but every other EMS provider has their own preference, whether it's Zoll or LifePak is the way to go. But as far as consistency goes, I mean, either which way is fine. I would prefer LifePak though. Yeah, your, your paramedics overwhelmingly went with LifePak when yeah. given that option. So. Yeah. What, uh, what did we have in the CIP this year? Do we know offhand? I don't. Yeah, is this budgeted for? Uh, it is. I do believe it would be under the CIP of the 401. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a dollar figure. Yes, but sure I think it was like 61,000, I do believe. Oh, oh so we, 
We're right under. We're yeah, yeah they're, right they're under. doing twenty thousand a year too. Um, oh, the yes. yeah. Say that. Interest so free. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Where Zoll was ninety eight. Your check gave him. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, Life yeah. hacker. Yeah. Twenty year known. Yeah. We budgeted though for it. Yes. So I don't yes. know yeah. if it makes a yeah. difference. You just pay it off. Yeah. And, and that's so. just it. That's another one of the big key selling points. Is I was really surprised too that they were able to actually offer up an annual payment plan and interest free nevertheless and but they were they were how long does that piece of equipment last typically um is it 20 years like they were going to give you interest free <laughs> 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 we're not quiet I wish, I wish. <laughs> you uh, have it halfway paid wise. off and yeah. then you need another one yeah i, I would say uh without incident i want to say it could be anywhere between three to eight years oh, okay. depending on how soon all of the new technology comes rolling out. Um, I think there's like, that's just the thing, yeah. As, as long as the technology is moving forward, it, it'll vary, but um, I believe a lot of the bugs and the kinks have been worked out of this particular pack, and um, right, yeah, so I would say then at this least is, Yeah, then this is back on our CIP or whatever as well for the next cycle then, since mm -hmm. it's going to be Quite so possibly. often. Yeah, that's right. Well, we need to make sure that yep. it gets thrown back on there. Yeah. And, and if it's budgeted for, I'm fine with going with... Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of life pack for Stryker in the amount of $60,794.52. I'll second. Motion by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Sharpie to approve the purchase of Life Pack from Stryker in the amount of sixty thousand six zero seven nine seven hundred ninety four dollars and fifty two cents. That would be in three interest free annual payments. I don't think we have to do that though. I, well, it's budgeted this year, so yeah. yeah. All right. Any other discussion? Do we want to note that uh, we're just going to pay it, or how um, we... Yeah, if we have it in our budget, I guess my motion would be to pay it. Okay. This year. Okay. Again, the motion to contain the verbiage that it would be paid for in one sum. In if receipt. it's in our budget, yes. If it's in the budget, right. which I'm almost positive which it is. <clears throat> said there's sixty-one thousand there, so yeah. then we're solid. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Wonderful. Thank Motion you, guys. To carry. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I did a couple more tidbits. Uh, so I've been uh, working with a Gaylord fighter uh, in regards to putting together a mock crash um, right before prom time for City Leaf schools. Uh, so within the next couple months, we'll be meeting with them and some other entities that will be actively involved in this, but uh, just for community involvement, I think would be really really cool thing I just want to share and then I suppose last but not least <laughs> he's gonna give me grief um, so uh, in regards to anticipating the fire department's needs and to just you know be this whole team player type <coughs> thing especially <laughs> you laugh <laughs> it's okay um, in regards to uh, trying to foster this relationship between the ambulance and fire um, I have signed up for fire school and I start my classes tomorrow night uh, it's through Minnesota West um, this is to kind of give me a foundation of what firefighting is all about and to help support this fire department's needs uh, I do anticipate on applying appropriately for the fire department to help them out especially with some coverage but um, yeah I just wanted to share with you guys that I have signed up and started my classes. <laughs> Good for you. Wow. <laughs> to yep. support Good. them. She's a probate now, guys. I was going to say, <laughs> there used to be a line there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But yeah, I just Building that it. bridge. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah we're proud. Yes. Yeah. Good. 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 I think this is, this is a big deal. Uh, so. the, the council is equally proud of you. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is good. But yes, I figured I'd just share that with you. So. Good. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It <laughs> should be fun. Do you have anything else? No. No. I'm proud of you for oh. your endeavor to inspire me. Well, good job. This is this will be good. So, otherwise, okay. I have nothing else.
Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thanks, guys. <clears throat> Item 10, December 2021, People Service O&M Report. Any questions on that? These, this was sent out to you. <coughs> Reviewed it and didn't see anything that jumped out at me, but lists some services they provided to residents throughout that month. Anything? All right, we will move along. Item 11, Fire Department 2021 Annual Report. So you guys have the annual report in front of you. It pretty much breaks down 2021. If you've got a second to read over, if you have any questions, I will try to answer to the best of my ability. Doug, That's if you want to sit up to the <laughs> microphone, that'd be great. Yeah. I think he's official now. Just Anyhow, yeah. Chief, Chief Matthews. Just one thing that popped into my mind when I was looking at this. Uh, what's involved when you uh, secure the he helipad for a helicopter coming in? What is involved in that? So we get to the hall, two people will take our pickup up. Um, we got bad to get into the hospital. Uh, John's got a little cart up there, got some phones in, we section off both seats on each side of the hospital. Okay. Okay. That's about it. Wait till the copter comes and go through it again. Okay. So, so how many in that? How many uh, it takes? How many people to do that? Uh, we just have two people go with the pickup. Okay. But, um, we've tried it a few different ways over the years, and pretty much everybody that comes to the hall just tries it for coming okay. up to the hall. Okay. So. Because I know our police department had indicated that they may be able to handle that. We'll have to see what you know. With the new chief coming on board now, hopefully yeah. soon, then we'll have to see if that can be worked out. And okay. Other questions for Doug? Rigs are all working pretty well. Any issues? Uh, nothing that I know of. Okay. I really like how it's laid out as far as the um, CIP, how far out it goes. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and and I know that you know we're trying to do our ten year and stuff, and it would be nice to see it even further because, especially your department, because I know that there's stuff, big stuff that comes up, and if we don't throw it on something right away, that it might get missed and then cause us some issues. Yeah. Well, not issues. I mean, it's gonna happen, but. I mean, maybe it'll hurt when it happens instead of being prepared for it, you know? So that's maybe something to, it's pretty much laid out, out, you know, quite a ways on here. For so. sure, yeah. <clears throat> how many, um, well, how many are on the fire department now? I know we're dealing with so an issue that we'll be discussing in a little while, but currently, what kind of numbers are you looking at? So right now, I'm sitting at 24 people. 24? Yes. Is that including or not including the ones that submitted their resi? That's... Nope, that's off of there. That's off of there, yeah. okay. And I've got, um, Amy will be starting class tomorrow. I've got one other gentleman if we can get him in, but I don't think there'll be any classes available from there. Oh, really? So I got wow. another applicant, and then um, we've got one currently going through school right now. So. Hmm. so we have a few people coming in. Mm -hmm. We're hoping with the house that we'll be able to go in town and yep. the equipment and whatever that, and we'll have some more people coming in for a good time to talk out. Mm -hmm. So is there a plan to, like, reach out to, like, Dad <laughs> Milcrack and... The other ones, the other businesses to... Yeah, we've had uh, one guy from Bailey Mosscap. I believe he's on Bronco Fire right now. Uh, I've had one of our guys talk to him, so... Yeah, 
Sometimes you might need a little bit more of an outside to work in public service for us. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. or whatever civil service that you have. Right. Yeah. Because you can talk to them and they can help you set up. So, um, they always go past it when sorry, it was kind of new to me here. So, mm-hmm. you're doing great. It's good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, we're, um, Amy and I talked, she put a Facebook post out on Friday, I believe, so yeah. well, let's have to keep on trying to get numbers somehow, some way. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. And they only run this school usually once a year, usually winter time or something, or what? Yeah, it's usually they start about the end of December, it's just the January, it's the 150 hours. And we pay for all their training, the ones that we bring them in? Um, when they're through with all their schooling and all the classes and everything they have, um, Minnesota State Police takes care of it. So oh, okay. They reserve it for them and they handle them. So. so do we pay for the ones that we're bringing in, that we're putting through school? Or they're paying for themselves? I, I believe it's initially that we're paying and then we get in reimbursed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just a thought, I mean, if we're hurting on people and we need people, I mean, we could consider maybe in the future, you know, doing some kind of sign-on bonus or something like that. You know, to help. I think there's already one there. I thought it was longevity and stuff like that, more so than a sign on. But there is a sign on. There is a sign on. Yep, yep, that's what I remember seeing on Facebook also. Mm-hmm. So it's just like you're going to get people going through now that are retired. Yeah. Yeah, I think with the, with the new businesses, you know, and, and businesses expanding, um, it could be uh, that that could be a really good uh, you know thing for us, mm-hmm. uh, especially when they support it. And I know that you know Scott Equipment and this uh, Data mm-hmm. Metacraft, or obviously uh, Hog and Miller Lumber also supports it as well. So, um, and I don't mean to miss any of the any of the others, but uh, especially when you have a lot of them, people, right? You have more odds. So if you had you know, 50 employees and three of them are firemen, then Absolutely. then obviously that helps, you know, as you get more employees. But if you got <coughs> five Perfect. employees, you know, that ratio is a little bit tougher, so. Okay, anything else for Doug? All good, right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck in your new position. I'm sure you'll do just very fine. Okay, thank you. Are, are, are you able to hang around for when we discuss this other item? Yeah, can you can you hang around for a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, let's move on to item twelve <coughs> ordinances. We have a few first readings. Uh, Phil, do you want to talk about these? Yeah. So. So this is just, obviously, we have to amend the comprehensive future plan because it was rezoned. And if you look at the first reading, the other one, it was rezoned the uh, building map. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. It's what we did for Tony Hawk's property. Um, There's really not much more to say. Do you guys have any questions? I'm more than happy to answer. So one is is redoing the zoning map. No, the the first one. First um, one is. Ordinance 339 is for the comprehensive plan. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And then Ordinance 340 is for the zoning map. Okay. 
both dealing with the same piece of property? Correct, yes. Okay. So at our planning and zoning meeting, you talked about doing some kind of the some zoning, the zoning report for the this surrounding area right here. Um, right, because I mean, really, what this is referencing is only that little square correct. within the big red square. So the blacked out square. So this is all that we're talking about zoning right now. And I guess my question, there's nothing else, no other buildings or anything outside of, right now, um, the, the property that Meffert bought, inside that little, uh, the bottom uh, right corner, mm -hmm. that has a building on it. The rest of the red does not have a building on it. That's all egg already. Mm -hmm. So my, my thought is we're taking that whole red area and bringing it into that. That is the plan. And the reason why we, I have to do a zoning report on it, because originally um, that property changed hands. Um, and I got a letter from the previous owner saying that they're okay with rezoning it. Now, under Minnesota statute, if you get a letter saying that it's okay, we can rezone it. However, it was going to be the way the procedures work, we were going to incorporate with the rezoning of David Memphis. But given that um, certain things kind of didn't line up right, and during that time the owners changed hands, um, I'm going to reach out to the new owners to make them aware based on procedures that, hey, we're looking to rezone this back to ag. Um, and at the same time, based under Minnesota statutes, I need to do a zoning report on it. That's how the structure um, is. I was not aware of that when I asked them for a letter of consent to the previous owner. I did a little bit more digging just to see how Minnesota does it, and then that's when I found out I need to do a zoning report, and I had to spend some time creating a report, um, the layout of it, which I showed the planning and zoning committee. And if you guys like so I can show you how the report's laid out, I can pull that up for you guys if you're interested. So these two are what you're talking about in these or in this first reading is that we're taking that whole red area. We're just focusing on Dave Memphis property right now. We, I need to, in order to do the remaining portion, I need to do that zoning report based on Minnesota statutes. I cannot do the whole area um, right now. And the reason why we're doing David Memphis first is because he requested a rezoning. The owners of, the, of this area right here are not requesting. But are, are they okay with it? That I, guess. I need to reach out to them to see if they're okay with it. Even if they're not okay with it, we can still rezone it as long as I have a report. That will, we will determine at the public hearing when we decide to, um, when it's in question. But, it, but if they're okay with it, then you could go ahead and just rezone it. I, even if they're okay with it, unless they request it themselves, I still need to do the report. They, in, in order for us to do it, um, well, to me, it makes more sense just to rezone that whole parcel instead of just that one and then do the rezoning again. That's my opinion, but... I understand, but we... To get it done for I Dave... I it depends on what they intend on using that property for. Right. Wasn't it my understanding that the, the guy that bought the little lower right was trying to buy that other land? I think that was the intention, yeah. and then so that deal must, must not be working out or somebody else bought it? He bought it another half acre, so in total he has an acre. And that's what he okay. was planning. So that's and that's what, was, and that's so what he was planning. Yeah. Yes. That is okay. the little this, block. But when it comes to this, I have to follow Minnesota statutes and procedures. Um, and the league confirmed it with me that unless that um, owner of this property right here actually files for a rezoning, if we want to rezone it, it would be good practice for us to do a report just to have a yeah. record of something. So right now we're dealing with the little the light box yes. in the corner, and that's the only thing we're, the this is asking, I guess. Right, so I'm my saying. concern is, is that spot zoning, Ross? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we should not do. Well, at the <clears> same time with spot zoning, I can't really speak on spot zoning right now because, well, yes, Ross admits it's spot zoning, and I'm looking into, like I said, this is why... I'm doing a report to rezone that whole portion because ultimately the end goal, based on our comprehensive plan, this B1 district was a 
from what I understand from our comp plan, should not have been zoned B1 because the feature of this area right here is supposed to be residential. I still don't, I'm looking to see the reason why this, that whole area was zoned B1. Um, I know I found record why this was zoned B1 because the owner of this parcel right there had a commercial business there. So I, I don't know why that surrounding area was zoned B1. I mean, I'm still looking at the records of it. So to avoid <coughs> spot zoning, we're, I, that's why I'm gonna do a report and try to rezone that. Okay, it sounds so, to me like this needs to go back to planning and zoning for clarification. It should have, it should have come to the council with all of this stuff worked out. Now we're having a member of planning and zoning questioning whether this is the right thing to do. I mean, that, that's fine. Like I said, it, originally this wasn't, I was trying to avoid this issue given well, I had what's a letter the, from the is, there, is there an urgency behind it? I mean, he wants to, he wants to have occupancy out there, I'm sure this year. But I, I don't I don't know for sure. I mean, he bought the property, right? And he's from my conversations with the gentleman when in his spring he would like to start a building. Right. Um, and like I said, originally my my goal was to rezone the ultimate. All, the goal was always to rezone the whole section. It's just through my studies I found out, given that a part of it is not technically his property, I have to do a report. <coughs> on that, e um, even with the owner's signed consent of it, you need, you should do a zoning report to rezone that area. Because it's not them requesting it, it's the city looking to rezone it. So therefore, we should have documentation on the reason why we want to rezone that area. So what color is that little right corner going to go to? If we green. This is going to go to green right, as so a green. So it would just be switching everything over to that egg yeah, residential. Right. This, this whole but if you just take Mefford's little corner there, that's totally spot zoning, and you really can't do that. That's why it was our recommendation that we take that whole quarter and and zone it to that egg residential or whatever. So how long would it take for you to get that process rolling? The report? I'm literally going to have it next zoning meeting in March. The first, the first yeah. Thursday. Well, I mean, you've got to contact the property owner. Right, and, li and like I said, even if they're, even if they wanted to keep it as B1, as long as we do a zoning report based on Minnesota statute, we can rezone that as one again. It, we don't necessarily, it's, it's good faith to reach out to them to see if they want. Yeah, I'm just trying to speed it up. So if you get somebody who's trying to build, I don't think they're trying to build in winter now. No. Well, not, well, yeah, but, it but I mean, so we if we drag it to spring. Well, yeah, no, no I, I agree. I, I am. You know, it's April. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm we get it done at the March, <coughs> at the March planning and zoning, it can come back here. What does the calendar look like? March, it could come back for the March 7th um, council meeting. Which might, that was my goal, to have that, just for the fact that for your first reading and for then first reading second, and then second reading, second reading, reading the end of March. The second or meeting. Or third week in March. I, we, it's probably plenty it of time. It will still be, we'll still keep these to ordinances, right. and we need to do two separate ordinances mm -hmm. for the remainder of that portion. So, I mean, if you guys want to, we could, I could table it until we do a report and make a decision on, have a public hearing That's on the others. I think it's just a good practice. Like you said, we're looking at spot zoning to eliminate that. Is there a motion to uh, table 12 and item 13. 12 and 13? Did you want to say something, I guess, before I... Ross. Ross, Ross did you? Oh, well, just, just a general comment. Uh, spot zoning is not flat out illegal. It's just um, not recommended for obvious reasons. Um, as far as uh, maintaining property values, uh, proper use of city uh, resources, things like that. So that's why you don't have, uh, or attempt not to have, a uh, single family home, gas station, um, liquor store, single family home, you know, mm -hmm. you get the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is frowned upon. Um, there's always spot zoning in, in every community. 
and some of it is grandfathered in. Uh, I'm sure you can drive up and down the streets and think, gee, what is that doing there? You know, <laughs> uh, it, it just happens. Just and then there are situations like this one where, you know, the, the property hasn't been utilized uh, until recently, and it does, uh, there is a strip of commercial along that township road. Uh, and then, of course, to the east, we have agricultural and the sewage treatment plant. So, uh, you know, I think there's, there's, there's arguments for allowing the change. Oh, that was my comment. Yeah, I'll second your motion. Who made the motion, please? Motion by Council Member Morgan, second by Council Member Batcher to take items 12 and 13 and uh, table those until a uh, future meeting pending further discussion by planning and zoning and coming back with a recommendation. Any other discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. Item 14, Resolution 14-2022, uh, Resolution Supporting Housing and Local Decision-Making Authority. Phil? So I was at a, I had a Zoom seminar for the League of Minnesota, and they brought to our attention that there have been talks uh, on the state level of restricting the town's independence when it comes to zoning and stuff, more or less. Um, and the League has recommended for cities that would rather have more independence when it comes to zoning and everything, our decisions when it comes to how we zone our town and everything, that we should pass an or uh, resolution like this that you see in front of you. I was kind of nervous when I read it. I didn't know what was coming down the pipe. But I think it's solid. Yeah, I think it's solid too, yeah. I don't need Big Brother coming in and telling That's me. That's right. That's right. pretty much exactly. what it says. Yeah. Turn the mic back on. I think we all heard you. You talk loud enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll introduce. I'll introduce resolution 14-2022, resolution supporting housing and local decision making authority. A second. Resolution 14-2022, a resolution supporting housing and local decision-making authority introduced by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Thomas. Further discussion? Hearing none, a vote by roll call. Council Member Sharpie? Yes. Council Member Thomas? Yes. Council Member Morgan? Yes. Council Member Batcher? Yes. Four in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. All right, uh, moving on to item 15, 2022 goals. We touched on those last time. They're listed there. Um, now is the time to make any comments, any changes, any deletions, any additions. The ones listed, electronic records for the cemetery, uh, continue to follow the 10-year CIP plan, uh, task the EDA to look into low-income housing, uh, simplify or correct city codes, and update the city comprehensive plan. Um, I would like to see added to this list that we complete the dog park. I believe funds are adequate to do that. Um, and then another item I would like to add is authorize administration to explore service from fiber optic provider. I was in a conversation today uh, with Amy and a provider from, trying to think of the name, company out of New Ulm, Nuvera, Nuvera. Nuvera is approaching, or they are uh, in the process of introducing fiber optics to the city of Glencoe. They will uh, hook up or um, create uh, 1,000 residential connections this year, the year 2022. And uh, they have approached City of Arlington with uh, um, the offer to provide fiber optics to the city. Uh, of course, 
depending on how many people are interested in hooking up. That's where the, uh, their support comes from. I was asked uh, what the cost would be to the city, and they said nothing. What was the name of the company? Nuvera, N-U-V-E-R-A. Used to be called New Ulm Fire or New Ulm Telephone, I believe, and they changed their name. Um, <coughs> they have um, put forth a two hundred and fifty million dollar initiative to get uh, a good share of the smaller cities in southern Minnesota done. Uh, they have pretty much everything done south of, um, well, more so south of here, more so in the New Ulm area. Are they running New Ulm right now? I don't I know. I know that there's a huge project there now with uh, bringing underground to homes. That might be, the, well, that likely I was wondering would, if it was the same Likely would be the not. one. So um, I would... Uh, ask that we add to the goals to we authorize administration to explore that possibility and um, so that if there is any quirks in it they can be worked out before budget time this fall and hopefully um, things could be worked out in that. They, they said they would do the surveying as far as uh, surveying the public to find out how many Residents may be interested. We have 991, I believe it is, residential households. And uh, they would, the city would not have to take care of sending out any surveys or questionnaires. They would do that. And, of course, they are going to be interested if there is enough to make it worthwhile for them. Do they, block, do they provide the service as well? Yes. Yes, they do. They've been a company, New Home Telephone's been in business for over 100 years. Uh, pretty solid uh, uh, company. So, Sounds like do they around. offer just the internet or do they offer internet, TV telephone, server, and TV, TV streaming? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you, have yeah. The, if you have the internet, the streaming comes with it. Right. Well, with, yeah, with the smart cable TVs. Or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. Yep. Some have like a dish or somebody else that's working with them, oh, right? Or they yeah. have a contract with one of those satellite companies, Fair maybe. Looking for, a motion? <laughs> looking for a motion to, unless somebody else has some goals or thinks that some of this should be. No, I like. Don't mind me, Jay. I have a question when it comes to low income housing. Um, yes. What, when it comes to low income housing, what is council thinking? Like, are we talking Section 8 or are we talking public housing or maybe a combination of both? Do you guys have any? I would be talking something that somebody can afford on a um, lower level of income, not, not necessarily subsidized from the government. Well, okay, then. Well, well, the reason why I bring this up because when, when it comes to low income housing, I mean, the main two things that it always refers to is Section 8 housing, which nine times out of ten it is, and public housing. I just want to make it clear if we would decide to do some form of public housing for Section 8, it would require some type of housing authority to handle that because you will need to talk, say, because I'm not sure how Minnesota State does it. Well, how would you phrase it? I guess from my perspective, how would you phrase it differently? Than no, no, the, the phrasing is fine. I just was just curious how what you all would, would think okay. with that because to me it comes to straight. When I think of low-income housing, it normally <coughs> refers to Section 8 or um, public housing. But what, from what you guys are looking at, it's just more looking for affordable housing, kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, on the dirt cheap level, the, the, you know, a low end and a high end, probably so six to $1,200 a month. Maybe and 1000 or less would be, would be it, uh, optimal. And with that? I can tell you right now the way the housing market is, it's going to be very hard to do that without some type of subsidy um, from the federal government or from well, the states. Just, just well, the, yeah, I mean, and I yeah. guess the goal says that the EDA is EDA is going to, to be checking into it. Housing. So. And yeah, I think that's a satisfactory thing, you know, just as long as we're, we're included at the council level to have discussions. Right. Uh, you know about what they're what they're coming up with. And when it, when it says correct city code, does that mean ordinances or? Yeah, we just started city working code. on that. Okay. Yeah, that's and a the big planning job. And zoning. Yeah, there there's a couple of things that in planning and zoning that we're working on that kind of 
I mean, the, the three here, looking at the ordinances, looking at, you know, and then the city code, and um, looking at the comprehensive plan, and those are huge tasks. There's, there's so a lot it's, of different it's housing options. It's not just the building a new house. I mean, right. There could yeah. be a tiny yeah. house. You could have a mobile home. You could yeah. have, mm -hmm. I mean, okay. there, there's creative options. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not okay. saying we're going to get somebody to be able to buy a brand new house for no, six no. to $1,200 a month. I just think that there's, um, you know, not everybody's making an income that can afford $1,550 a month. Yeah. And Okay, I just want clarification. That's what I assumed you all were talking about, but you know what they say about assuming. Also, pivoting to the city code, does council, pretty much when it comes to city codes, it's the city chapters. Does council want P&G to work on the city chapters? Because in reality, if well, you I look just at asked the city that question. chapters. I thought it was yeah, we, ordinances. We are looking. Well, the, really the only, I mean, I'm fine with, with planning zoning do it but doing it, but when it really comes down to our city chapters, which are our ordinances, planning and zoning, unless council says otherwise, we really only have authority over the planning and zoning code. And the reason I bring this up is because of our fence chapter. Even though they need a land use <coughs> permit for a fence, we have to like you can't get a variance for a fence, so therefore zoning has no authority over that chapter. Well, then we That's should come up with. We're a, going then we should the come chapters. up with another committee to go over ordinances because they need to be gone over. They're obsolete. That's planning. That's planning. That's planning I think what planning That's what we have been doing. doing. Yeah. Well, We've been going I, through. I'm just no? looking for. No, I'm just looking for clarification. No, we're, all we're going over is the zoning code, which is Chapter 31 of the city code. That's all we're going over in planning and zoning. Mr. Yeah, Chairman. unless the school goes through, then we'll be going over codes as well. I'll make a motion right. to approve the uh, 2022 Ordinances. goals yeah. City codes. as amended during this meeting. Okay. <coughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Councilmember Morgan, second by Councilmember Thomas to approve of the 2022 list of goals with those, uh, including those that were uh, included or added, I should say, uh, at this, this council meeting. Um, any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion is carried. So to clarify, talking about simplifying and correct the city codes, we're talking about the ordinances through the planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. Item 16, recommendation of council to fill seat left vacant by council member Craig Buss's resignation. Um, the interviews were done and, and uh, all the, those uh, interviewing, interviewees were asked to rank the uh, candidates, and I think uh, Mr. Mangus has a. Uh, yes, I have. Um, I have can I say something? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. I definitely want to share that. Uh, Put your microphone on. You know, share to the candidates who applied. Um, you know, thank you all for um, showing interest, taking the time to. Uh, you know, apply for, for the open seat. Um, definitely appreciate it. I think there was, you know, obviously coming in front of a group this this large and answering questions out of the, you know, that maybe you haven't heard before is, is definitely could be intimidating and stuff. So uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, you know, we have what, a year? Does this seat have a year left on this it's, open uh, seat? Three years left. Three years so this left. one is three? Yes. Okay. Well, there will be another seat, you know, coming up here in November, possibly, you know, two, I guess. I, I'm not sure where they all... Uh, two expire, yeah. yes, and my term expires also. So yours expires. And <laughs> Mine expires. <laughs> Mine expires, so... So there's, there's definitely opportunity. I, you know, obviously we, you know, we're asked to, you know, look at it and judge and, and you know, rank and whatnot, so... Um, that's different from the people, right? So the, when you go on the ballot, it's going to be the community voting. And, 
so that that would be obviously slightly different than this this go around but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that that you know this isn't the end uh, if, if that person doesn't you know if you're applying you didn't get it there's there's going to be more opportunity good point good point Thanks, thank you for that um, I think the purpose with this is to keep maintain anonymity and uh, so the numbers as far as the ranking numbers Mr. Mangus will be telling us what those are, not from who they are, and we can just judge from that um, what action to take next. Okay. So if you'd want to go ahead. I'm just going to read down what um, Council Doris said for Kristen Lithos, one, Councilwoman voted 32. For Tom Halstead, 42. For Dave Meyer, Meyer 45. Then Another voted for Kristen um, Litfin, I'm not sure. Litfin. Litfin, okay. Uh, 16, Tom Halstead, 33, Dave Meyer, 42. Another, uh, Kristen Litfin, 33, Tom Halstead, 39, Dave Meyer, 39. Then another, uh, Kristen Litfin, 31, Tom Halstead, 41, Dave Meyer, 36. And by totaling them up, Dave Meyer had um, was the highest score out of those three. Do you have a total there? Um, the total for him was 162. Um, do you want me to read for all of them? Yes. Okay, for Kristen Litho, her total was 112. Tom House was 155. And Dave Meyer was 162. 162. Okay, open for any discussion or comments. Um, so that was council members. There was four that were listed. Mayor, your yes. numbers aren't in there? My numbers are right here, and I'll use them if I have to. Oh. If there's a tie vote, I will use them. My numbers are not in there. Is that fair? So That's fair enough. Was that the only council? That's the only time I vote. Yeah, the four. That didn't include, uh, it did not include no, Amy's. It so it's just no, including. It's only voting members. Okay. Yep. Yep, so what is it? Christine had how many total? Uh, 112. Tom House that had 155. Dave Meyer had 162. There you go up the numbers. Two of them were close. Yes. We're very close. I mean, to have maybe discussion yeah. on, you know, what the differences were or not. Well, I mean, and we individually ranked them, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Given yeah. each question five points or whatever it was, so. Yeah. So if someone wishes to make a motion, I'll there may be a need for a um, resolution at the next meeting. Amy didn't sure. know for sure if it was required or not, but. A resolution so, to appoint in a... Well, yeah, this would just be an indication of who, but the formal resolution may or may not, depending on what she finds out, may be necessary at the next meeting, which is just a formality. Well, I mean, if there's no discussion, I'd make a motion to... Uh, Accept Dave Meyer as our next council member. I'll second that. Based off the numbers. Okay, uh, Council Member Thomas moved that, and uh, Council Member Sharpie second that uh, Dave Meyer be declared the uh, individual to fill the vacant council seat, and that would be for the remainder. As a four-year term, so a three-year, almost a three-year remainder, uh, ending December 31st of 2024. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried.
All right, thank, thank you, the, the ones that are here tonight and the ones that uh, expressed interest. We appreciate that very much. Item 17, approve or deny payment to Bolton and Mank for preliminary layout, corresponding estimate for County Road 166 <laughs> extension, not to exceed $5,000. Um, in your packet was a map of uh, the proposed 166 extension, um, which would connect County Road 17 to State Highway 5. Yeah. There's been yeah. uh, there's oh, okay. been many maps. Uh, this is yeah. I want to stress that um, a few private developers have came to us and were interested in finding access to pretty much the parcels that are in question around in this section as you see right here. So this was brought in front of the EDA. The EDA discussed and said that there was a one-time talks with the county about extending County Road 166. I reached out to um, Tim Becker, the Public Works Director, and said, um, if, the, if the city's interested in it, let's, um, they're not necessarily against doing it. Um, we did, we looked for ways to find funding for it. We talked to the, um, our senator and our house rep Representative, they said that um, we, if by I think the end of March, they want us to pretty much draft up some engineering drawings for them so we, they can pass a bill to get on the bond stuff to help provide funding because from what I'm understanding, there's some state funding that we can get for this. Um, so they, that's pretty much what we're asking for is to create some engineering drawings that obviously won't exceed 5000 to help us get craft a bill that hopefully <coughs> that will get um, approved in the state where we can get some money for this. In your meeting with the county, uh, I think believe Jason Femright, our engineer, was there also. Yes. And he, he did indicate at the meeting we had here prior to that, he indicated they would do some test borings. Yes. Is that part of this five thousand? Um, it would be. It would be. Okay. I, in my. Um, so is, that in writing? so is this is this I thought that that uh, the push to get this done that the county was going to be what portion is the county paying for this or is this all us um no it's not all us no, no. this would be it's to, the, the county right. it's to try and get on the county's plan mm -hmm. for to and then with state funding right to take care of it I mean, the one thing I asked about where we have that line drawn right now, isn't there a house right next to that? Which? Yeah. Absolutely. I know whose house it is. Yeah, I'm talking about this yeah, one right there. Yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. yeah that, I, well. We're still in the preliminary it's, yeah, phase. It's, it's so yeah. this, is, this could easily change and we can move it down. Yeah, to, yeah. And that's all that. those things so, that have to be dealt so, with. So at one point, and I know that the county has maps of, 166 where it was going to go and it wasn't going to snake up by the right. railroad tracks right. it was going to go just directly straight across from <coughs> east to west from right. where 166 is correct directly and then go all the way out um so 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 that that's one thing and i and i know that they had like some kind of preliminary stuff done on that already in the books and then the second part of that is right where that road curves and goes to the north on the west side of that map. Right there, get down a little bit on that property, that's the city's property. There has been boring done there and right around in that area because we did soil samples. Remember that, Rich? There's soil samples that have already have been taken place there, not extending to the east, Okay. But in that area that goes up like that, so and if those just were to be done, aware, if those were done by Bolden and Mank, they would yeah, have record of those. They were. I think yeah. it's this whole area along here is where they're concerned right. about the. Yeah, uh, but the one that, because I mean, what they ended up finding is that that was pretty much a, uh, you know, wet swampy-ish area. Well, we heard so. hand, firsthand testimony about the tractors peak. being stuck. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Well, you can just look at the land and see where it's kind of lower or where it would be. 
Well, I guess uh, help me understand the whole no longer going straight again. Well, this was just um, the reason why this was made as a decision is because this is the railroad comes through here. Given that this already has uh, um, pretty much access cutting oh. through there, that's why it's going to snake up there instead of cutting through because we don't know if the rail uh, authority would permit us to make another um, cut right there. At I the think same time, well, so the DOT didn't want an, uh, another access. on a curve. Was some of this started from that land we owned that we had no access? Wasn't I guess this no, right here. Th this has nothing to do with <coughs> this. I thought yeah. it was. This was brought no. when it was going to go straight. This was brought no. to us by two, two private individuals that were interested in just wanting to know access and seeing if there's anything that we could do. And like I said, this came about mm -hmm. in the EDA we um, decided <coughs> to see if we could... If so do they possible. own land already or yes. are they just inquiring? One of them does own land. Okay. And it's connected to that? Yes. Or So but, uh, does the, does the county have money then to go ahead to and move? Take the high seat. Take the high seat. Yeah, we I'm from the EDA. Anyway, you know that. Yeah, you were at the meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was at the meeting. The biggest thing is, is if we get a road like that, we can get a lot of trucks off Henderson Road, keep them off Henderson Road, and all the trucks that would come down to that road into Northland, Northland Drying, and then maybe into Data. DMI. Yeah, data. In the back end, yeah, um, yeah. but that's one of our big issues too. Is that? But what about the house that's right next to it? That we just yeah, about? there's some talk of moving it out a little bit more the road, that, like so we don't have to hassle like with them people in, in their yeah. living room, right? Right, especially if we're going to put trucks <coughs> on it. <coughs> but Danielson's owned that property, yeah. the family of Danielson, yeah. and I think Amy said about two years ago they talked about developing that house. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue. Is the housing, we don't have no land any other place to build factories or businesses, so we figure why not extend it out into this area, you know, because there's plenty of land down there to build anything that wants to come to the town. So the land, the, the physical land and the house is owned by the same place, or just no. the physical land? Just the physical land. Yeah. Yeah. This is farmland. Right, so actually then with, with you saying that, Holly, and then the, them talking about doing probably residential on that farmland that's on the east side there, I would say that how the road was going, when I first looked at the map and seen the road going into Circle Lane, I thought, why in the heck would you put it like coming in there? But if it's going to be residential and then to actually use that area, it would probably make more sense to go into Circle Lane, honestly. Right. The problem is, I think, there, it's like you said, it's all in, it's all up in the air, but we need the $5,000 by March 25th. She has to have a project in. And the senator and the representative says there's tons of money. And yeah. instead of giving us 135 bucks back a piece, you know, they could use right. it here. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and, and You're not going to get $135, are we? But, but the road itself is just preliminary. We did nothing yeah. said. It's just no. we just need no. to no. get well, the it circle lane. It's different. If it's I mean, it's that totally area. different. I'm yeah. not trying to stall. I'm just no, saying. No, but I think they have to look at all the boring. Another go. issue is Henderson yeah. Road. If you bring that road into that, you got five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what the in engineer was saying. You're going to have. Five roads Five coming into this yeah, intersection, that's why right. and they want to try to avoid yeah. that. And Maybe they'll cut Henderson Road off. He even mentioned a, a uh, roundabout if well, you have no, to. This is why with this new update, this has that roundabout. It does have the roundabout. Yeah. Is there okay. Space there for the roundabout? It, from what the engineers have, with an eight you road. you would take yeah, away well, from that again the triangle property from owner, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that other one. The other ones you couldn't take away from the. You'd take away from the west. Yeah. From what I understand from the engineers, it is possible. I think the biggest thing here is to get the five thousand dollars so we can at least yeah. start getting the boring going, and we can get on that state funding. Right, but before yeah. you do the borings, you got to kind of have an idea where the road's going to go. Right, right. That's so what that's Bolton, I think that's what they are know too. That's what this is currently what we're looking at. When Bolton and Mink was here that day, we pushed them and said, "How fast can you do it? They can start any time." 
You know how it is in money talks. As far as borings and, and yeah. that type of thing, planning. Yeah, yeah. you can bore. Well, I also wanted to show you guys what the DBA did our discussions. This is pretty much what the DBA was looking at. I mean, this is what the road going straight, but this is more or less what the end goal would be, the, the objective of why we would have this road. is because if we want to, as Tyler stated, we really don't have anywhere to expand our heavy industrial stuff, a proper place. So that would be, by putting that road in, that would be the best alternative for us. At the same time, we could also expand a little bit of housing too that would benefit us as well. We did talk about the 22 acres that we have. Is it split into four sets? Instead of just giving one person a whole ball of wax. Yeah, that's just it's yeah. a preliminary too, but mm -hmm. EDA is <coughs> Yep. It just creates more options in that area. Right. You yeah. could look yeah. at maybe cutting off the angled one and then just having it as an actual T if they do go that way. Because these people could already just drive it here farther forward and get back there. Then you don't have a five lane intersection. Yeah, because if you're going to have an area where you're going to be doing the borings, you're going to want the borings done from approximately where you're going to put the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, to me, I mean, it makes sense to throw. It didn't make sense when I was looking at it before, but now it does make sense to kind of bring it to that circle lane, interject there, have the intersection there on your prior map, not that one, the one that you sent us in the our packet. The one that you sent, this one. Oh, that one. Yep. But evidently, there's some reason why Bolton and Mank is not choosing Well, if it's heavy that. trucks, you got the deal, you got the county guys leaving, and they would potentially take that route. The plan and get all these trucks, get the trucks off of Main Street. Yeah, yeah. Put it off Anderson Road too. Yep. You can shut that down. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is, you know, if you go you could Nama, probably you could close that road. Get rid of that little section right there. Of Henderson Road. Henderson road. road. Yeah. You know, yeah. Walk a little farther yeah. and then yep. loop back in there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because it would connect with then. Um, what is that? That goes past uh, Four Seasons Park. That would be uh, Second Avenue. First, Avenue. First Avenue. First Avenue. First Avenue. There you is some advantages with there. with this coming up and crossing right here. Uh, you have a uh, what do they call it? staging area? So mm -hmm. in other words, large trucks coming off the highway would have you could Ample you know, space two, space yeah. for probably two semis in there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you come across straight, you're cutting a new new path to the highway. No staging area. Right. You've got to put a. Uh, uh, cross arms in here, and you've got to put cross arms in here, so you're saving yeah. one set of cross arms by doing it. Yeah. And they're okay. 25,000 a piece. Right. Quarter million. Oh, yeah, quarter yeah. million. Right. Yeah, 250,000. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Just for the super arms. Just for the arms. Yeah. Do we, are we going to send out some notifications to the respective people here just that we're even talking about this? And okay. here we are looking at getting the plan going and person that's going to be affected the most well if we're if probably in the twilight about it once we start moving forward with this project yes they we will have to notify them based on this yeah. like that they will have to be notified but right now we're not even sure if like we're just pretty much in the planning stage right now but this isn't we're just trying to get money so we can get we, we've that been on that rodeo before. Grand. Yeah, <laughs> we're spending five grand. Yeah. We're going after funding. Yeah. If it's going to be in my front yard or my backyard, you know, I, I would want to know about it. If I'm in favor yeah. or not. And if I could, we could reach out to them. I don't see that being an issue. But like I said, this is strictly. I mean, the circle easy. lane doesn't really affect them, but the one that we had drawn, when it's mm -hmm. going right there, and the dude's got a camper sitting there right now. And I mean, the reason why this wasn't. This has they been would, mentioned have before to, to the public is because based on our procedures and stuff, when private investors ask ask us to look into something like this, there's a little thing we'll put it in the EDA on a level of confidentiality. So it once we move beyond this point, yes, we can start notifying people that we're in the works of doing this and then we I can talk to them and see how they feel and everything. I can bring this in front of so if it's for two property owners that 
is requesting this. Not the people that live on that street or anybody else. But the whole town is going to pay for it. Well, the town, so. let's be clear, the, the, well, the goal is not for the town to pay for this. The goal is for the state to finance well, we the project. $5,000. Well, that's, that's the yeah. closest we're going to get. And I guess that's, <coughs> a, that's a first step. You either spend the 5000 and let Bolton and, and Mink do some preliminary yeah. work, yeah. or we say we aren't interested. Yeah. So in the preliminary work, is it going to be evaluating? Because right now you've got some squiggly lines. You've got several different versions. Are they going to evaluate that as a whole and make a recommendation? Mm -hmm. I mean, because I'm sure the road has to be so far away from housing. Right. There, oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. all going to be taken yeah. into but, consideration. But, yeah, we have it right against that one house. Yeah. That's right. It's, I mean, you drive, I drive by it every day. There's a camper sitting right there. The guy actually plows it occasionally. He hasn't got it plowed right now. But, yeah. I mean, right. that's where the road would be. Well, I mean, that's like eminent domain, though. I mean, you just purchase the home, purchase the property, because it's too close to what you're going to develop. I mean, it's not pretty, but that's what happens, right, for growth? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, my gosh, you guys. Really you look at me like I'm evil. I'm not speaking for the EDA, but I think it would be a good, better plan to live out. That way you don't have to worry about uh, people saying things and we're all far enough. Well, I, I agree. You know, yeah, I agree. That's, like, when I, when I looked at it, that's what well, I you thought. You sit there and go, we'll take the $5,000 and look at So, so are they going to bore both well, that's, options? That's what I'm asking. Well, no, not for $5,000. No, but I think the city council could say, we like this plan better. Let's spend the money for yeah. this plan. I right mean, here. for the trucks, it makes the most sense to go the other way. But the, the, the challenge is, is... Yeah, because... But you can like, make... I mean, the dude's window's going to be shaking when the trucks drive by. That's how close it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, looking at the two options, I, at first, didn't like this one. But after looking at the other one that you've just presented, Phil, I do like this one better because it accommodates everybody that's already living there. Seems to me the question we need to have answered though is why did Bolton and Meg decide to change it? What is their reason for changing? What, what I've heard is because of the five intersections coming into that place. In by Henderson Road and stuff like that. No, yeah, but this isn't Bolton this and Mink. Bolton this is Mink. the one that we gave Bolton and Mink, I thought. Uh, what he just no, no, said. no, no. Sorry, no. this is me making my maps. Bolton and Mink requested this. They, they've given me Oh, oh so we're, I'm totally confused. Okay. Yeah, let me, so uh, this is the one they're going to bore? No, the, let me, I'm going to clarify. This was recommended by Bolton and Mink, as was the, um, the one, this one as well. They have given us different, uh, different options. So we have to choose. We can, right. and that is something based off pretty much with the 5,000, when they do boring and stuff, they would see, based on these options but, that we have, which one would be the better option. But I thought you said for 5,000, they're only just going to bore one option. We don't know that. Right? Well, the ground's frozen. We don't, frozen. Yes. We don't know that. Whatever yeah. the thousand yeah. decides, yeah. if you yeah. want to go that route or this other route, it'll be that's what you're going to choose one. And yeah, if you guys recommend more. that these should be, we should go all the way from the housing, that'd be fine too. And at the same time, we could get better clarification when it comes to board me based off the money that we're willing to spend on it to see how they're going to do the boring because the, it <coughs> might be they might be able to do boring clear as mud well you guys got the option to say well but the council can't say put it here if it if putting it there isn't going to work from an engineering standpoint waste the money you know well, I, you know, regardless, no matter what you do, it's just going to, the project's going to end up costing more if the soil's not up to par. It's more fill, it's more, right? You can put anything you anywhere. <laughs> well, that's, you I, that's can a put peat anything field. Anywhere. I just tell, everyone yeah. knows it's a well, peat field. It is, it is. But, but the whole thing is, I mean, you can kind of see where it all is. So you're just, I mean, honestly, it's just going to be what they're going to end up, you know, what the yeah, project's going to end up costing it. Probably the, 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 the regular field over here is probably better just in that well, diagonal section. Well, I, I, think, I think the bigger deal is you disrupt the housing development, right? Mm -hmm. By putting it out farther. Right. Well, right. Depend, you might be able to have houses on each side of each it. Each side of it. But March 25th is a thing. So maybe when Amy comes back tomorrow, you meet with her. You know, you definitely could have those she knows on both sides of it. Yeah. Yeah, but they're gonna I would assume that the they're gonna 
look at different options when they bore it. And we're just saying you can do this, but not to exceed five thousand dollars. And we're not giving them a set no set plan. Just we're just authorizing the because they're going to have to figure it out. Right, they're going to figure it out. So what we're doing is just authorizing them to start start checking into this, figuring out the, the best place to put this road. Motion yep. to go back down, motion to approve the 5,000. Second. To do which map? Is it both maps? Well, it, well, whatever, the works, whatever they can give us for 5,000. It yeah. says four preliminary layout yep. and corresponding estimates. I mean, we can't say direct but your focus. The yeah, because they got to figure it out. They've got to figure it out what the best route's going to be. Us. That's what we pay them. So I want them to send us, uh, <laughs> before they get too far boring, <laughs> a preliminary, a preliminary. What they're going to, where they're. Yes. So that's in your motion? That's in my motion. Well, that's, yeah. But not a second. Motion by Councilmember Morgan, second by Councilmember Thomas to approve payment to Bolton Bank for preliminary layout corresponding estimate for County Road 166 extension, not to exceed $5,000. Council to be informed as to their findings immediately. How do you want to word it? Well, I would, I would assume we would get those findings and then well, that's take it yeah. from yeah. there, yeah. whether that's... Yep. Well, each, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I guess my question was, is what map are they going to use? Are they going to use that map or are they going to use but both? If, but if they, they start going... Use go whatever map is going to work out. I was going to say, if they start down one and it's not going to work, they're probably going to move to the other one and one. see, is that option B going to work? Yeah. I think if it comes from Circle Lane, it probably can't be called 2062. Yeah, it'll take a jog. <laughs> takes a jog. County yes, roads do. I guess it could be. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Takes a jog. I always hate that when that yeah. is talking to me. <laughs> and it's like Turn right. Turn left. Okay, any other questions on that? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, I think that's it. We have the tables items, right? Or the stuff oh, the tables right? items. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. The uh, items EFGH, originally EFGH, were tabled for discussion at this time. Joe, I can speak on three of them. I've known about their resignations before this whole, everything started back in, yeah. long before then. I know Keith was talking retirement quite a while ago already, and then both carpenters were yeah. around quite a while ago. Yeah, and that I, I can you know, concur I, I that, that, that the cor carpenters had told me the same thing. Yeah. I, I don't know Keith. Suspicion but suspicion of that, I just, I didn't, I was, what I was thinking was it wouldn't hurt to ask. I mean, obviously yeah. we went through a pretty traumatic uh, few months of, you yeah. know, with, with things that were, up in the air. Up in the year. air, unknowns. Yeah, um, and I get that. You know, maybe even with, with uh, you know, reaching out to John and asking him if it's something that he's interested in, you know, maintaining on the department. Um, obviously, it's it would cut his stress level down in, in, the, in the time that, you know, he would uh, would, would be demanded of him if that's something that he's, that he's open for. And, and that, that was just all that I was at. Rather than just accepting... Right. And going right. on. And we could reach out to John. I don't think that's but I know the other three they they had planned on this a while ago already, so and even if it was they hung on for a few more months, well we've got, you know, obviously we got a couple people that might be going to, to class now and maybe there's one from Gaylord that's possibly gonna be able to join. So we um, could I mean we could ask us. Yeah. John is not the type so of guy that's gonna you. walk away yeah. and not be there for the guys. Right. And girls, he right. is there even though he's retired. I no, mean, yeah, you, no, no, no. I, I just, it, I, I'm just thinking with him that you know this, you know, it was consuming a lot of his time, and and maybe, you know, maybe he's open to, um, you know, maintaining on for a little while. That might already be completely ruled <coughs> out. I'm just asking that we, you know, I'm just well, I mean, maybe we, maybe we ask. You know, I I think that we I, need to acknowledge every a lot of the. Uh, uh, what you don't understand is how much money he actually went out and got grants for for the fire department. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And I'm not sure if any other fire fire chief prior to him has done that, but that was huge. 
Yeah, um, I think it should be recognized. Well, yeah. Well, I mean... No, that, that's... Like I said... I don't, like I said, I, it, you know, I know the, the other ones... This was all started long before anything we did or anything that, that happened in the last couple months, so... But, you know, the other thing that we... I don't, I don't think we do as a city is do exit polling on when people leave. Exit interviews, you mean? Exit, Exit interviews. interviews, yeah. Yeah. That would actually, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, for every, uh, across the whole board, I mean, and that's even including council people, in my opinion. Well, well I mean, well, we got voted out. <laughs> well, I mean, or if they didn't file for re election, or if they're done, or if they leave a committee, I mean, it can be open to, because I mean, sometimes people leave for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I kind of know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying it might be a good... It's not... And even for I, retirements I, I do, I do and stuff like that or whatever, idea. too. Just well, to that's because if they have suggestions how you can prove things, improve things, why not? Well, yeah, so or, give to, or give kudos to... Or give kudos to, like, what they're leaving. You so know so what so I mean? Oh, yeah, it's recognition. Good positive stuff going right back at the people that you either retire from or leave from. Even though you're moving on to something, you know, bigger, better, or lateral, or whatever. Yeah. So I guess my suggestion, and, and some of where it comes from, is, is you know I've had employees that have turned in notice. We've sat down and talked with them, and, and it's not always financial. That is some of the cases, but mm -hmm. there's been times where you're able to, you know, meet some of the, you know things that they were wanting to do for themselves um, and and to retain them yeah no i know i've been through the asking same thing asking is nothing the the resignations have already been turned in whether or not we accept you know like i mean obviously we will have to vote on it eventually but if if that was a board <coughs> just making the call to ask if, if they choose to maintain that way then we just you know have it on the docket the next well time. i uh, you know i'll meet what what's your, what's your thoughts on? You mean John? Yeah. Yeah. But do you get any feel for the others as far as if, I mean, it was no surprise that they. No. Yeah. Well, we've heard for years that, and John has mentioned for years, he said we could have quite a few of them, <clears throat> you know, turning in their resignation. Yeah. So I guess I, I wasn't surprised by this. Surprised it all happened at the same time, I guess, and disappointed the circumstances were what they were. But well, So what does the council want to do with the four resignations? Table acceptance or... Well, I think we need to accept them. I mean, it was their wishes. Yeah, was their Doug, wish. if you want to reach out to John, with well, once they resign, then how do you? I mean, you just you just if if um, they choose to, I mean, stay I resign on, the end once they went back on. Okay. Like consulting and yes. or joining yeah. or. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve their resignations. Second. Motion by Councilmember Sharpie, second by Councilmember Batcher to accept the resignations of uh, the following. Chad Carpenter, Arlington Fire Department, effective January 18th, 2022. Uh, Corey Carpenter, from the Arlington Fire Department, effective January 26th, 2022. Keith Dresden, from Arlington Fire Department, effective February 1st, 2022. And John Zaski, from Arlington Fire Department, effective February 2nd, 2022. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. Mr. Thomas, how did you vote? I didn't hear your... Well, I, I think we should reach out to Jenner. Yeah. So Are you I'm going to go no. You're going to go no? I think the discussion without accepting the resignation maybe has a little bit more um, possible impact. It may not affect it at all, but, you know... 
it just means yeah. that we're, we're giving it that extra step to um, try to make it work, I guess. Well, that's so nice, it's, it's, but it's earlier it's today you just appointed Doug as chief. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, no, no, I understand that. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, it's not, I, it's, it's not, not to have John chief. stay it's on a, as chief, it says, it says, just to stay on. It says that he's resi his resignation from the Arlington Fire Department is what. Yes, I thought it was yeah. chief. No, it does not. Say no, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. says chief. All, all of them say. Oh, it just says from the department. No, oh. from the department, and that's. I guess that's what I'm yeah. alluding to. Is that so you don't want to. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying that I wouldn't. All I'm asking for is that we, we reach out to them, to all four of them. And if they if they say no, you know, um, you know, mine is made up. It, it, it doesn't. It's not going to impact it at all. Then, you know, fully accept it. Okay, with two votes in favor, two against, I will vote uh, against and uh, just take that extra step and approach like them. I, said, I don't need it. I don't need it because I've already talked to three of them. I already know what their answers are. Prior to So that motion fails three to two. And now we have to decide who's going to approach him. I, I guess I would like Doug to to do so. If he's up for it, if it sounded like he was. Could you do that? Sure. That would be appreciated. Maybe get back to Amy with the results or with the answers. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. All right. To the appointments of what? They were already done. Oh, yeah. Yes, they were already done. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I think procedurally, you know, since it was on the agenda, perhaps it would be appropriate to have a motion to table it uh, till the next meeting. Otherwise, it's just kind of Oh, that's right. I'm sorry because we, we didn't accept the them. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay, that motion, the motion to... Uh, Except their resignation failed three to two. Now I need a motion to table those four resignations until follow the next meeting. I'll make a motion to table them. I'll second. Uh, motion to table the four resignations of the fire de fire uh, fighters uh, made by Morgan, Councilmember Morgan, second by Councilmember Thomas. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Oh. Motion passes. I think you did say aye, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So that one is tabled then. Got that, Phil? All right. Committee updates. Anything that needs to be talked about that hasn't been brought up yet? Yeah, I was at a Sidley East Community Education uh, Advisory Council meeting last Thursday. Um, they talked about... Um, Summer school, rollover, uh, they get to roll over some funds that they didn't spend, so they're going to do some extra um, five, five full weeks over the summer for um, additional summer preschool um, for, for students that are at risk. Um, there was uh, some money sent back from the um, MDH state stabilization, stabilization grant. Um, it could only be used a specific way, and the uh, four um, wages for the employees um, that are working with these students, um, and the wages um, are low, too low, and they can't, the community education couldn't pay those CARES or that staff more money because it's not in the contract, um, so they had to give some money back. Um, yeah, that's kind of sad. Um, contracts weren't done, and that could have been part of it. Um, they're looking at um, going from 35 kids to about 50 kids in the summer child care this year. Um, so that's a nice jump um, from one year to the next. That's a child care thing? Yeah. Thing? Yeah, their child care that they run. Well, green care, summer care. So it's all school-aged kids, right? Yeah. So I think you can be in preschool, I think, age three. Through. I'm not sure how old you send your kids yet, but uh, they're going to be doing some preschool screening on March 14th and 15th at the elementary school in Gaylord. 
Uh, and registration for preschool is going to be in April. That's going to be announced here shortly. Um, there is still not a pool manager. Uh, so the pool at the school is still closed, has been closed all year. Um, they, uh, I think, are expecting some, um, the school is expecting some, uh, or probably retirement in the FIA department in the next year, potentially. So they're hoping to add that pool manager position onto the FIA um, teacher position when they, mm -hmm. when they put that out there. Um, that's still potentially, that's not a solid for, for whatever thing, but um, I know a lot of talk was, um, it cost the school um, $40,000 40, $40, a year for the pool and it's not being utilized. There's no money coming in at all. So um, everybody there is pretty disappointed that we can't get that up and going. And I know just from other people that they want to see that open in town. Especially in wintertime. But, you know, even in the summertime, you know, there's, unless you bus or can get your kids out of town, there's nothing for these, you know, younger kids that can actually go and do something to do to cool off or whatever. I know at one point the city used to um, do, uh, give some money to the school towards the pool to keep it open during the summer hours. That was probably... I don't know how many years ago that was, but I know that got stopped now. Mm, I think that was even, it was a $25,000, I think. Yeah, it was substantial it was to keep the pool open, though. Yes, yes, for, for the, the summer. summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the reasoning at the time was the city doesn't have a city-owned pool. So this was, in effect, the city pool. And so the council at that time uh, budgeted for uh, some of the support of the pool. Um, I think it was perceived that, well, this is my own <laughs> vague recollection, uh, that uh, uh, at some point the school was kind of um, um, building in costs uh, uh, that maybe weren't directly related to the city's intention. Uh, so there was some miscommunication there. Uh, also, I guess the city perceived that the pool was being utilized regionally uh, and rightly or wrongly, a council at some point thought, well, the taxpayers of Arlington are subsidizing the pool, but a lot of the people using the pool are coming from out of town. And so the council at that time, I guess, just didn't like the feel of that. And those are the two things that I recall were discussed when the council decided to terminate that pool support, that they felt the school was fudging the numbers a little bit and that out of town people were benefiting. Um, you know, I'm not commenting on the council's views on those things. Mm -hmm. I'm just relating my recollection of what the discussions were at the time that we terminated that support. Yeah, in retrospect, now looking at it, bringing people in from other communities is like what you want to do, right? To help your help the growth of your community to support your local businesses. But maybe that's something we want to look into at some point or whatever, give our kids something to do. Um, so, and then that was just old business or whatever, talking about that pool manager position. Um, so they're still practicing uh, mandates for COVID and different procedures and stuff like that. Not there's no mask mandate or anything like that, but just cleaning and and um, you know making people aware of their health and stuff like that. Um, there's some after school en enrichment funds available um, that sh uh, community yet is bringing in a couple of different activities. One was like a mobile learning lab, and that was to um, kind of focus on the high school age kids, middle to high school, high school age-ish kids. That's coming in March 17th at the um, senior high in Arlington here. Um, there's another um, uh, Kid Create. Um, that's more like art projects and that sort of thing for all age groups. Um, they're targeting at-risk students um, at at-risk times. So they'll be coming in more regularly and right after school so that 
you know, 3, 3.15 to that 5 o'clock time area or whatever is when they're going to be um, running those. Um, the winter spring bulletin, or they're getting ready to print the summer bulletin. Um, and we're, they were talking about what to add in that bulletin or that brochure. Um, and talking about adding like a, a calendar of the events in the area, so um, like extravaganza, um, different other th uh, farmers markets in Arlington, Gaylord, wherever else in the area that, you know, uh, the school district, within the school district, uh, just kind of giving more uh, acknowledgement to them so you know what's going on or what to do during the month and kind of lay it out more instead of a, a book that you read of different activities and more like a calendar you know, with the different things that you can sign up for and stuff. So she's going to be uh, looking into that to see see how she can get that laid out. Other communities do do their brochure like that. Um, she's she's going to um, be getting Prairie Fire uh, Theater in this summer, uh, June and August dates. And that will be, I mean, we, right now we're not using the theater, the auditorium at all at, at the school. Um, and that thing is state of the art. <laughs> I mean, it is really nice, very, very nice. No, I like. Uh, I know the school is still looking for one act play, your musical, the the couple that was um, uh, the directors, the play directors. They they um, they're done. So those openings have been there all year long, so the kids mm -hmm. haven't had that opportunity to do any kind of theater. Um, and I, I would imagine that if this is in the summer, it would probably be open to all ages instead of you know just your middle school to high school kids. Um, and then baseball opportunity, hoping that there's gonna be a youth baseball opportunity. And I, I learned something. Um, Arlington and, Arlington and uh, Green Isle, used to be uh, the Irish A's. Mm -hmm. uh, they combined it with Gaylord uh, two years ago, I guess. So it's A-G-G-I for baseball now, and that usually services your second through seventh grades. Um, so they're hoping that they'd have enough kids for that league. The parent group is kinda uh, don't know if that's going to come into community yet or going to stay with the parent group. Um, and then I guess at least hired a new baseball uh, varsity coach, Brian Jinnicky. Hmm. So um, he was talking about having some involvement with that youth program, which would be really good. Always a good thing. And then I had to leave to come here to planning and zoning. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the, the other thing was uh, community <laughs> assessment needs. Um, and I suppose that's just like brainstorming about different activities that we can bring to community education for different things to do. So if anybody at any time has any suggestions of things to add to that booklet, let me know and I can pass it along and bring it to my meeting. Anything. So. Okay, thank you. Any other committee reports, committee updates, open discussion, anything? I just have one thing. Yes. Last Thursday, I had the opportunity to host or help with the Leading Sibley Together group. We had 16 people to the town. Um, we held our class at the school, at the auditorium, which, yes, is really nice there. Um, they got to tour the school a little bit, learn about the different pro couple different programs that they have there. Uh, we toured David Meadowcraft, and Gene and Tom did a very good, excellent tour. If you haven't been in there, it's pretty cool now. Uh, much different than it was when we toured it the first time. Um, did who's on, checked out who's on first and then finished up at A-Town. And after it's all done, you know, they do a reflection and kind of a wrap up and everybody kind of gave their comments and um, they were all very impressed with what we're doing in Arlington and what we've done so far with, you know, with the data metacraft and all the things that we're doing. So we're doing the right things. They were really impressed. Oh, and we toured the ambulance. I had to put Jamie on the spot. We were ahead of schedule. So I had to find somebody to fill a half hour time. And since we were at Hoosen first, we swinged over there too. So okay. they learned a lot. Who was the group that you were with? Leading Sibley together. Okay. Um, yeah. It's like a little cohort group yeah. to 
build leadership skills. I think it started, what, four years ago? Four, yeah, I think more um, than that. Mm -hmm. no, I did it was the first ago. group, I think, four years ago or something. And then um, I think they skipped last year, though, right, yep. because of COVID? Yes. But they meet, I think, once a month for nine months, yep. and it's typically during the day, but they tour the different cities in Sibley yeah, County Sibley and look County. at their yep. economic yeah, development. And it's a good program. You learn a lot. And your brother's doing it now. Towns. Good. Your brother's yeah. doing it now. Yeah. Bob. Good networking group, from what yeah. I understand. Yeah, they were very impressed with everything there. So. Okay. Anything else? Motion is in order to adjourn. Motion adjourned. Second. Who has had second? Me. Yep. Motion by Thomas, second by Batcher to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 825. Uh, next month, we will be taking council pictures. What do you You'll mean, my... Council pictures next month. The group. Group picture. Oh, okay. when you have So everybody? just dress yes. appropriately. I'm sorry, next well, meeting. On the Tuesday. Next meeting. We'll swear in our new council member, and then you'll be part of the group at that time. So we wanted to wait to... Get the new council yeah, member on board. You. What's your phone number? What is it, March? Just email it to you. No, 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 just wait. This is the first February. Um, next meeting. Next meeting 